Hello, and thank you for having me for Pivotal Moments today. My name is Dave Warner, and I'm a designer at Adobe. Webster's Dictionary defines pivotal as vitally important. Whoa, 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 okay, that's just about enough of that. Let's make this a little more animated. Pivotal Moments. Chapter one, Teach for America. My first job after college was with Teach for America, a nonprofit organization that trains and places recent college grads to become teachers in low-income school districts with teacher shortages across the country. I was placed as a language arts teacher at Northeast Middle School in Baltimore, Maryland. Even on the first day, I could tell this was going to be a challenging experience. For one, my classroom was in a hallway with flimsy dividers separating me from two other classes on either side. So this meant there were no walls to separate the noise from one classroom to another. This meant things would regularly get thrown over the dividers from one class to another. And this meant that any student skipping class could just wander into my classroom whenever they wanted to. Not exactly the most ideal learning environment. One day, a wandering male student came into my classroom and started pushing and hitting one of my female students. I asked him to leave and called the non-existent security on the intercom, but nothing was working and the male student was getting more aggressive. In an effort to divert his attention, I grabbed his hat and walked to the entrance of the classroom, continually asking him to leave. The student then proceeded to punch me on the left side of my head. The classroom gasped in disbelief. He snatched his hat and ran down the hall, yelling about how he was going to murder me. The student was caught and expelled, but that incident was emblematic of the daily chaos the school was in. In the fourth quarter of the year, the principal was fired and the state of Maryland took over the school. Throughout it all, I just felt sorry for these kids. It seemed like everything was stacked against them simply because of where they were growing up. And yet, so many did prevail. I can still remember students like Sierra, Nolan, and James who fought against the odds and continually showed remarkable growth and diverse talents. So it was for students like them that I tried my best, making lesson plans that were lighter on textbooks and heavier on contemporary references to music and movies the kids liked. I made a website about a fictional world called Northeast Island, where each student could choose where they lived, craft creative writing stories about their various adventures, and track their grades and progress throughout the year. I even started an after-school club called Vocabulary Video Games, where each day we learned five new words and used them in our trash talking while playing Super Smash Bros. on the GameCube. Northeast Middle School was the most difficult job I've ever had. It gave me a first-hand look at the inequality of education in this country. But it also taught me that even when faced against overwhelming negative odds, good things can still happen. I wasn't the best teacher, and I failed way more times than I succeeded that year. But I hope that overall, I made a positive impact. Chapter two, okay Dave. I went to a graduate school called Portfolio Center in Atlanta, Georgia, now part of the Miami Ad School. It was time well spent teaching me how to take my abstract, chaotic imagination and translate it into a marketable, real world creative skill set. Now, this was back in the ancient time of 2004, an era before a certain young entrepreneur had launched Behance. Hey there. A traditional portfolio was thought of as a big leather-bound printed book you would lug around from interview to interview to showcase your work. But as someone who is more interested in the worlds of websites, motion graphics, and video games, a printed portfolio didn't seem like the best medium to showcase my work in. So I pleaded with the head of the school, Hank Richardson, to forego the book and make an online portfolio instead. Hank thought about it for a while and eventually gave in, saying, okay cowboy, but it needs to be special. So I worked tirelessly on making the best digital representation of my work that I could, and the end result was a portfolio site called OK Dave. The Flash-based site started with a collage of projects, using embedded After Effects videos to create colorful transitions. Each project was accompanied by a behind-the-scenes video, digging into the process of how each piece was created, documenting all the insights, missteps, and revelations made along the way. There were also some secret projects hidden on the site, like an acoustic cover version of Paula Abdul's Straight Up. Every project had a story behind it, and those stories stuck with people. Recruitment emails started to pour into my inbox. The site won an FWA Favorite Website Award for the month it launched. Some total rando named John Knack from Adobe blogged about it. 
It was a crazy first step into the professional creative industry and opened the door to so many amazing opportunities, including moving out to San Francisco and making an indie video game called Atmosphere. While the game was never a colossal hit, it had a dedicated and passionate fan base and was an incredible experience. We even ended up being a finalist in the TechCrunch 50 competition, presenting to some people like Robert Scoble and Sheryl Sandberg, and beating out some little-known startup called Dropbox. When I look back at these crazy times and wonder why everything happened as it did, I think it comes down to one thing, telling stories. These weren't just pristine projects on a blank page. The short videos created a more personal and human connection. And to this day, people still remember and talk to me about those stories. It's a learning I still try to work into everything I do, whether it's presenting a design concept or sharing something on social media. A good story is one of the best ways to help your creations resonate and have a lasting impact. Chapter three, Royal Theater Academy. Joining a sports team is a rite of passage for most kids growing up. And I have two kids, Cameron and Bridget. They tried their fair share of soccer, basketball, cheerleading, and baseball. I even coached a little league team for three years, go grasshoppers. And while we got a lot of positive life lessons and friendships out of these experiences, if I'm being honest, they were never considered at the top of our favorite family activities. So my son Cameron started taking some acting lessons at a local company called the Royal Theater Academy. When the company did a production of Peter Pan, he played a little elf who was probably only on stage for a whopping two minutes, but he immediately fell in love with it. He looked forward to theater rehearsals exponentially more than he ever had with any sports practice. Now, the cool thing about RTA is that they're an all ages theater company. So anyone at any age can audition to be in a show. And Cameron slowly started dragging the rest of the family into shows. It started with my wife, April, joining him in Shrek. I'll admit, I was pretty hesitant to join them at first. I had never taken any kind of drama or acting class. I thought I might be too busy, too old, and too unskilled to take on a new hobby. But my family can be terribly persuasive. So when RTA announced their next production of The Little Mermaid, I tried out. And to my surprise, I got cast as Chef Louis. He was a small part, only showing up in two scenes in the second act, but it meant I got to sing Les Poissons, Les Poissons, he 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 ha ha ha, while chasing kids dressed up as crabs and fish around the stage with a prop chopping knife. And it was actually pretty fun trying to embody this completely over the top psychopathic chef. And being able to share the stage together with the rest of my family was an awesome experience. So I kind of just kept going and taking on bigger roles like Willy Wonka, where I got to order Oompa Loompas around and make sarcastic comments to spoiled kids, and Mr. Banks and Mary Poppins, mustache and British accent and all. Some Adobe design peeps have even come out to see some shows. And my kids have continued to grow and start grabbing bigger roles like Cameron as Michael Darling in Peter Pan. I'm still jealous he got to fly. And my daughter was cast for the Broadway Sacramento touring production of Waitress, where she played Jenna's daughter, Lulu. Most recently, we all joined a June 2022 production of Matilda, and my eight-year-old daughter, Bridget, has been cast in the lead role. Cameron will be her friend, Bruce Bogtrotter. I'll be her idiotic used car salesman, Dad, Mr. Wormwood. And April will be the librarian, Mrs. Phelps. I'm also finding an excuse to use Adobe products like Fresco, Character Animator, and After Effects to create animated segments they'll project on stage during some key scenes. In retrospect, it seems silly how I could have ever been hesitant about joining the theater world. Without a doubt, it's created the most fun and memorable experiences we've had together as a family. Even after being on this planet for 40 plus years, I found that every once in a while finding the courage to venture into the unknown and try something completely new can be deeply rewarding. So yeah, that's it. Try to make a positive impact, tell stories, and try new stuff. Not exactly groundbreaking advice, but for me, those ideas have been the driving forces behind some of the most influential moments of my life. These critical paths, these vital occasions, these essential developments, these pivotal moments.